us and joining me right now from Capitol Hill is Chairwoman of the House Budget Committee, Congresswoman Diane Black of Tennessee. And Chairwoman, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Great. I was glad to be with you, Maria. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I want to get to the budget and all things uh, economic in a moment, but you are also a registered nurse. We're hearing from doctors and nurses and paramedics in Las Vegas that they say they've never seen so many patients with such extensive injuries. As a nurse, your reaction to obviously what must be a, a, a complete overwhelming situation for the medical personnel there. Oh, absolutely, Maria. I am an emergency room nurse, and I have been in situations where we did receive a, new, a number of patients from catastrophic instances such as this, um, not anywhere near what was going on out there in Vegas. But i got to tell you, I just cannot imagine um, being there trying to take care of all those patients, not having the physical resources, the personnel. Uh, it had to be total chaos. And, and thank God we have good people that are working in those hospitals and doing everything they can. And then talking about the heroes people who put patients in their trucks and took them to the hospital. Um, there are just so many good things to come out of such a horrible tragedy that was out there in Vegas. You're absolutely right. And, of course, Vice President Mike Pence really rolling up his sleeves to help out, literally. He donated blood yesterday while in Phoenix to raise awareness for those in need. Uh, in your home state of Tennessee, country, country music stars honored the Las Vegas victims at a vigil in Nashville. What do you make of these reactions? Uh, is, is there anything that we should be telling viewers to do if they want to help? Well, I think, again, the, the drive for blood, uh, as much blood as they can get, they're going to need this, not just for now, but for weeks to come, because there will be people recovering that are going to need that blood. So if you um, can give blood, please go and give blood. And then in the meantime, we just need to lift those families up in our prayers and, and pray for those that were there at the, um, at, at the event that saw just things they will never forget. Having been a part of some of these catastrophic instances, I know that there are just visions you'll never forget. So we need to keep all those folks in our prayers. Congresswoman, let, let's talk about the budget. You've been showing such leadership here, and uh, we want to talk about the House set to vote on the 2018 budget resolution this week, which would also open the door to using the reconciliation process to push tax reform through with a simple majority. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, the, the budget is balanced at this point. What are, what are the prospects for passage in terms of the tax news? Well, I'm very proud of what has come out of our committee. This is the most conservative budget in over 20 years. Um, we do mandatory spending uh, reforms, which are so important because, as you know, and the American people are finding out, as we uh, have $20 trillion in debt, we cannot continue to spend. Uh, outspend what we bring in. So mandatory spending, we start to rebuild our military. And then this is the golden key to unlock tax reform that is so needed in our country. It hasn't been reformed since 1986. So I'm very proud of this budget. Um, we're going to be passing this budget on the floor tomorrow. Uh, it has been a long time in coming, and I'm very proud of my members and proud of my conference that uh, will stand up and say, here's our vision for America, and I think it's a very fine vision. This 2018 budget uh, looks different than what the House version was, which called for the tax plan that does not add to the deficit. Uh, the Senate edition would allow tax writers to add the $1.5 trillion to the deficit over 10 years. How is this different? Talk to us about how this will be different than what we've spoken about in the past few months. Well, Maria, this is our budget will probably look different. That we don't have the budget of the Senate yet, although I've been meeting with some of the Senate, Senate leaders. And so our budget will look different. And uh, that's not unusual for the Senate to look different than the House. And we'll have to go to conference and we'll have to work that out. But I will say that our budget is one that balances in 10 years. That is what the American people want us to do, is be fiscally responsible. And so I'm, I'm hoping when the conference committee gets together that we can hold firm to a number of things in our budget that are very, very important for the future of this country. You know, we've been talking all about this tax plan now for a couple of weeks. Republican leaders now apparently backing away from fully repealing the state and local tax deduction, which is estimated to cost, what, one and a third trillion dollars over the next decade. What are you... What, what's your take on this? I mean, I know Congressman Peter King of New York said he will not vote for a tax bill that repeals the deduction. And New York Governor Andrew Cuomo tweeted this out uh, last week. He said, under the GOP tax reform plan, every region of New York will see a tax increase if this deduction is, is actually uh, eliminated. Well, first, let me say that what we put out is a framework. We'll continue to work to make sure that, that, that we get tax um, 
a tax relief for everyone. But at the same time, there are some things that some states have, and the state of New York and California and some of the other states that have very, very high uh, property taxes are getting a, 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 an opportunity to have that taken off of their tax uh, returns, and they are getting a big, um, a big relief that other states that don't have those high taxes have. So we've got to find a way that we can equalize that so that we don't have some states with very high taxes getting the advantage while those with the lower taxes um, are not getting that advantage. And so this is a hard thing to do to balance, but at the end of the day, what our goal is is that everyone will see a relief in their taxes. Yeah, because if you, if you don't change what, what is in the framework right now, everybody's not going to get tax relief, right? I mean, Look, you're right. New York, California, a lot of other states, they have high taxes and they have high property taxes. So is the idea now being floated about perhaps changing that deduction elimination and maybe only keeping, you know, capping it at a certain level or maybe just allowed, uh, allowing people to deduct the property tax deduction? What, what's the story? Yeah, there are a lot of discussions going on and there are so many moving pieces in this. So you have to have a dial that dials one thing down you dial something else up, and those dials do affect uh, what happens in the total package. So we will be looking at a lot of different options for those states that have those high property taxes and income taxes. And at the end of the day, as I say, this is about relief, and we want to have relief for all Americans. Are you still considering a fourth bracket for the highest earners? There's, there's a discussion going on on that end as well. Yeah, because uh, I'm just uh, wondering, you know, how you could not cut taxes on the highest earners when we all know that the top 10 percent of taxpayers pay what, 90 percent of the tax or is it 80 percent? Yeah, it's close to 90 percent. Yeah. So if you don't cut taxes on the highest earners, are you really cutting taxes? Well, if you get rid of things like the AMT, um, that really does help out. So there are other things besides just the brackets and what you do in those. There are other um, pieces that will affect those high-income earners. In, in terms of spending on defense, uh, your thoughts there, in, in terms of this being the right number that you've got budgeted, what are your what's your take in terms of what's most important that you want to see in there regardless as you head into uh, th th tomorrow morning, with the, which is uh, obviously budget day? Well, our committee feels really comfortable where we landed on that number for our defense. Um, we know that our defense has really been decimated over the last eight years and that we need to build up our military. We've got to make sure that our men and women who serve this country and protect us are protected when they go overseas. Uh, and so we feel comfortable with where we are at the $621.5 billion. Uh, now, I will say that the Senate may come back with something different, but we really feel good about that. We did work work with the, um, with the defense uh, hawks about where they thought we should land, and we feel like we got to a pretty good place between where we currently are, where the president wanted it, and where they wanted it. And so um, we've, we've kind of split the difference there, and that, I think, ended up being a good um, amount that we put on that line. So it sounds like if you get passage this week or next week, you could have a tax bill on the president's desk by the end of the year, or what, by Thanksgiving is the goal, right? That's our goal. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks so much.